this lesson and in the following one, some prior knowledge necessary to follow our course on digital systems will be presented. And this first lesson is about binary enumeration system. Computers receive, store, process, transmit data of different types, for example, numbers, characters, sounds, or pictures. The common point is that all those data must be encoded using zeros and ones. And computer technology is based on electronic circuits that process this kind of information, that is to say that process vectors of zeros and ones, the so-called binary encoding system. Among the data processed by computers, an essential type is constituted by numbers. How can we represent numbers and perform arithmetic operations with only two digits, zero and one? We already know the decimal system and we are going to define the binary and the hexadecimal system. First, some comments about, about our traditional numeration system, the decimal system. Decimal system uses 10 digits, 0, 1, 2, and so on, up to 9. And it is a positional system. That means that a width is associated to every digit position so that the position of the digit within the number is relevant. An example, when we write 653, what we mean is 6 times 10 to the power 2 plus 5 times 10 to the power 1 plus 3 times 10 to the power 0. 6 hundredths, 5 tenths, and 3 units. Then we can do the same but with 10 replaced by 2 so that in binary there are two digits instead of 10 called binary digit or in short bits. It's a positional system and to the positions of the bits are associated weights that are powers of 2 instead of power of 10. Let us see an example the binary number 1101 represents 1 times 2 to the power 3, that is to say 8, plus 1 times 2 to the power 4, plus 0 times 2 to the power 1, plus 1 times 2 to the power 0. So that this is 8 plus 4 plus 1, equal to 13. So that this binary vector is the binary representation of decimal 13. Now an exercise. Compute the decimal representation of this binary number. The solution is this one. Here there are six bits that correspond to weights 2 to the 5, that is to say 32, 2 to the 4, 16, 2 to the 3, 8, square 2, 4, 2, and 1. And the represented number is 32 plus 8 plus 1, that is to say 41. Now some comments about the range of representable number. With n bits, we can represent all natural number from 0 2, 2 to the n minus 1. There are exactly 2 to the n combinations of zeros and 1 in an n-bit vector. Here is an example with n equal to 4. There are 16 combinations of 4 bits. And uh, in this table, we see all the combinations from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1 that correspond to decimal number from 0 to 
50. Let us see more examples. With 3 bits, we can represent all number from 0 to 7. With 4 bits, all natural from 0 to 15. With 5 bits, all natural from 0 to 31. And with 6 bits, all number, natural number from 0 to 63. Conversely, how many bits do we need to represent some given natural number? For example, to represent 48, we must look for a value of n such that 48 is smaller than 2 to the n, but greater than or equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. In this case, the solution is 6 because actually 48 is greater than or equal, equal to 32 but is smaller than 64. And you can check that number 48 can be represented in this form. Actually, this is 32. The weight corresponding to this bit is 32, and the weight corresponding to this one is 16, so that the represented number is 48. Sometimes, instead of a base 2 system, a base 2 to the 4, that is 16, system is used. The so-called hexadecimal system. Then, there are 16 digits from 0 to 15, but as regards digits 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 letters are used instead of digits. It's a positional system. As an example, this hexadecimal number is 3 times 16 to the 3 plus 10 times, because A represents 10, 16 to the square plus 9 times 16 mass plus 15, f, f is 15. Then you can compute the result of this arithmetic expression and you will check that this hexadecimal number in decimal is 15,007. As a matter of fact, the hexadecimal system is nothing else than an easier and more dense way to represent numbers in binary, as the conversion from one system to the other is straightforward. An example. Consider the hexadecimal number 3A9, this one. To convert it to binary, we just replaced each hexadecimal digit by its 4-bit binary representation. For example, 9 in binary is 1001. A, that is to say 10, in binary is 1010. And 3 in binary is 0011. So that the representation of hexadecimal 3A9 is binary 0011, 1010, 1001. Conversely, to translate a binary representation to an hexadecimal representation, we partition the binary number into 4-bit vectors from right to left. In this case, the first group, second one, the third one, and the fourth one. And then we replace those vectors by an hexadecimal digit. For example, 0, 1, 0, 1 is equal to 5. 1, 0, 1, 0 is 10, and in hexadecimal we write it as A. 1, 0, 1, 1 is equal to 11, represent 11, and in hexadecimal we write it as B, and finally 1, 0, 0 is equal to 4. So the conversion 
from binary to hexadecimal is straightforward. An exercise, compute the hexadecimal representation of this binary number, and uh, then, second part of the exercise, compute the binary representation of this hexadecimal number. This is the solution. To represent this binary number in hexadecimal, we define four big groups. 1100 is 12, that is to say C, 0100 is 4, 1101 is 11, that is, excuse me, is 13, that is to say D, and 110 is 6. Now, given this hexadecimal number, we just substitute C by 1100, 2 by 0010, F by 1111, and 5 by 0101. And we get the binary representation of this hexadecimal number. The conversion from decimal to binary is not as simple than from hexadecimal to binary. The conversion algorithm consists of a sequence of divisions by two. Let us see an example. We want to represent 18 in binary. Then the sequence of divisions is as follows. 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9, with the remainder equal to 0. 9 divided by 2 is equal to 4, with the remainder equal to 1. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2, with the remainder equal to 0. 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1, with a remainder equal to 0. And the computation ends when the obtained quotient is equal to 1, as in this case. Then, the result of the conversion is this latest quotient 1 and the sequence of remainders from in reverse order, that is to say 0, 0, 1, 0. And you can check that this binary vector represents 16 plus 2, that is to say 18. An exercise, write number 43 in binary. Here is the solution. 43 divided by 2 is equal to 21, and the remainder is equal to 1. 21 divided by 2 is equal to 10, and the remainder is equal to 1. 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5, remainder equal to 0. 5 divided by 2 is equal to 2, remainder equal to 1, and finally 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1, remainder equal to 0, and the result of the conversion is 1, this one, and the set of remainders in reverse order, that is to say 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. You can check that the weight of this bit is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Adding up, you get 32 plus 8, 40 plus 2 plus 1. This is 43. It remains to see how sums and differences are performed in binary. Actually, it is just an adaptation of the classical decimal addition and difference adapted to the binary system. When we add up two bits, there are four possibilities. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 and 1 plus 0 is equal to 1, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 that in binary can be written under this form, so that the current step bit is zero, and the carry 
to the next step is 1. An example, if we must compute a plus b, then 1 plus 1 is 2, so that the bit of this step is 0 and there is a carry equal to 1. 1 plus 1, 0, carry 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3, that is to say the bit of at this step is 1 and there is a carry 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0, 1, carry equal, equal to 0. 0 plus 1, 1 carry 0, 1 plus 0, 1 carry 0, 0 plus 1, 1 carry equal to 0, and 1 plus 0 equal to 1. And this is the result. When computing the difference between two bits, there are also four possibilities. 0 minus 0 is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 minus 1 is equal to 1 that can be written as minus 2 plus 1. So, the current bit step bit is equal to 1, but there is a borrow from the next step equal to 1. An example, if we compute a minus b, then 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1 is 1, but with the borrow equal to 1. 1 minus 1 minus 1 is minus 1, so I write 1, and there is a borrow to the next step equal to 1. 0 minus 0 minus 1, once again it's minus 1. 0 minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2, so 0 and borrow equal to 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, there is no borrow. 0 minus 1, 1 with borrow equal to 1. And finally, 1 minus 1, 0. So the result is this one. Now, an exercise. Compute a plus b and a minus b. Solution. First, a plus b. 1 plus 1, 0. Carry 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1. Carry 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0, 1. Carry 0. 0 plus 1 plus 0, 1. Carry 0. 1 plus 1, 0, carry 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0, 1, carry 0. 0, 0 plus 1, 1, carry 0. And 0 plus 1, 1. The difference, 1 minus 1 equal to 0. 0 minus 1, 1, borrow 1. 0 minus 0 minus 1, 1, borrow 1. 1 minus 0 minus 1, 0, borrow equal to 0. 1, 1 minus 1, 0, borrow equal to 0. 0 minus 0, 0, borrow equal to 0. 0 minus 1, 1, but borrow equal to 1. And finally, 1 minus 1, 0. And this is the reason. Summary. We have seen that in computers, data are represented with zeros and ones. The binary num numeration system has been defined as well as the, the hexadecimal system. The range of representable numbers have been computed. Conversion methods between numeration systems have been seen. And finally, addition and difference algorithms for binary numbers have been described.